Okay, we are in someplace amazing, and I thought I would show it to you, which is we are on top. Well, we're very close to Mount Etna. We're on Mount Etna. This is the lava. You can see the old lava and fruit and all these formations. And up at the top, you see the mountain. Well, the volcano where there's snow. And it's really amazing. It's outside the town of Zephyrana. And over there is the water. And it's really, really an amazing, amazing place. I don't know if you'll ever get here, but since you might not, I wanted you to see it. But I hope you get to see it someday. Even on, even on a cloudy day, it's just remarkable. Mount Etna, an active volcano. I thought I would take this little movie to show you because we're even farther up the mountain on the way to the very chippy top of Mount Etna, which we're obviously not going to. But you can see that uh, we're in the clouds. And this is the Silvestri Craters, and there are five of them. And they're named in memory of a volcanologist who um, who studied this Mount Etna and other volcanoes his whole life. But it's like you can just see it's like all black. You can hear it crunch along. It's like all volcanic sand and really cool. And you can just go down into the, like I'm not going super high because I'm not that brave. These are brave people walking along the rim of a crater of a volcano. But little Lisa stays down in the valley, nice and safe. But I thought you could like to see it. Be quiet so you can hear the crunching. Oh, very cool. Mount Etna is really a cool place to visit. And now, in a way, you have. Okay, well, that was the scaredy cat view of Mount Etna because I didn't go up to the top, but let me show you some pictures. And, I, and I'll tell you, this does fold into the book, believe it or not. First off, let's back up a minute. Mount Etna is an active volcano. It is in the west of Sicily. So Sicily is an island, Palermo's over in the east. And I really wanted loyalty to be set in lots of different representative places of Sicily. So if you think back to the beginning of these videos, for example, we started in Palermo, which is the capital city and it's on the water. And we talked about the Concadoro, which is the lush valley that's irrigated by the Arabs in days many centuries earlier. And, and that's where all the lemons are grown and it's very lush. But I also, but it's not really like all of Sicily isn't like that. In fact, a lot of Sicily is not irrigated, especially in the 1800s. So I thought, well, I'm here. I've got to really explore this whole island. So I went down, which is called South, and I saw more drier areas. We went to the town of Musomeli, which is central, and we've talked about that in a previous thing, and there's farming there, but it's hard to farm because there's not much irrigation. So there's uh, shepherds and all kinds of things, all of which makes its way into loyalty. There is a shepherd in loyalty. But when I was there, I realized that there's so much more of Sicily to see. And the West is so interesting. And the character of Franco in loyalty comes from the West. Mount Etna is an active volcano in the West. And he is from the town of Bronte. So I said, well, you can't. I mean, I didn't decide that before I went there. I wasn't sure where he would be from, from but locating a character in time and place is really, really important because this is the trade secret part of our show. You're trying to make a realistic character. Well, everybody's from somewhere. And my mother always used to say, it's old school Italian, but she used to say, where are your people from? You know, it could be like 49th Street in West Philly, or it could be Abruzzi in Italy, or it could be whatever it was. But the point was always the same. You are a little bit where you're from and you kind of carry that with you. You know, we tend to be very tribal about where we are. If you think about like, football teams. Philly is Eagles, you know, it's partly because you grew up here. And I think that if you think about that for a moment or two, that might be true of you with whatever team you follow, or English football, which now for some reason I'm following, which is very interesting. You're like, oh, we're from Liverpool, you know, you're either this team or that team, you're Everton, or you're Liverpool. And all of these things tend to be about geography. So it was incumbent upon me to learn about the geography of Sicily and go there. So I said, all right, well, let's make him from the West because the West is different from the East. The East where Palermo is, is very, they 
were more sophisticated. They were more worldly. As we've talked about, Sicily was a really major kind of tourist destination, considered very she she. So that would be the cool people, but more rural places. Well, that's where he's from. And Bronte, is a, they grow the best pistachios there, which we did a video of, partly because I love pistachios. And also how interesting, what's pistachio growing look like? And so he and his brother are from Bronte. That is around Etna. Well, I said, All right, well, we should go see Etna. And as you know, I was traveling with Laura, who's the best friend ever. And we're driving, and it's a lot of driving, like, and it's a lot of up and down. And she is much more adventurous than I am. And so she's like, let's go to Edna. And I'm like, let's not, because it's not in the book. It's not going to be in the book. And also it's very high and it might erupt. Can I just tell you that we were there in October? Somebody just said, I think it was October, 2021, Mount Etna erupted one week after we left. So my complete paranoia was well-founded. In any event, let me show you the best thing about Mount Etna. Do you see this man? Do you see this man? His name is Fabrizio. This is Fabrizio, only the hottest guy on the planet. Here I am looking like so giddy, like, oh my God, I'm standing next to this hunk. There's Laura. Fabrizio was our guide. He lives in the area. So you want to know where the area is? I, I've stalked him on Google Maps. No, I'm only kidding. And um, how gorgeous is this man? Okay, I want to get a close up. Just pretend, pretend. Look at that. Holy God in heaven. Would you climb into an active volcano for this man? How desperate are you? If you're me, pretty friggin' desperate. All I'm saying is, okay, he knows all about it. And so we have to go up at, I'm like, this is good. We'll go and we're in his car. It's super cute. It's got like, he's got like a Jeep. He's so manly. He actually smokes and he rolls his own cigarettes. I don't even, look, I know smoking's bad for you. I don't smoke. My mother smoked. But this guy, when he's, I was like, this is the first time I've actually led smoking. It was cool. Maybe I should start smoking so, so Fabrizio can roll my cigarettes. I mean, enormously warm, bear like, super huggy. Woo! Okay, all I'm saying is we're going up the mountain with Fabrizio. It's really a long trip, it's like almost two hours. This is what the terrain looks like lower. We're driving in his little Jeep. You know, I felt like I was 16 again and somebody had their first car. It was really cute. And the funny thing is, oh, I just threw the picture. Hold on, I gotta get the picture. Oh, wait, cause, oh, sugar. Oh, I'll show you another picture. Okay, the thing is, because we were going to Sicily. I'd never been, I looked it up on the maps, so all that stuff. I figure I get some nice cute dresses. Like I think I'm an HBO, you know, White Lotus before that was even filmed. And then it turns out that Etna is freezing cold and we get there and Fabrizio says, you'll be, you know, you're going to be so cold. And I'm like, not if you warm me up, baby. Woo! <laughs> Sorry, I'm being bad. But then he said, well, I will take care of this. I'm like, you're damn right. You will. No, what he did was he got his cousin's clothes. Fabrizio, I threw it so I can't get it, but I'll show you another picture. Fabrizio got his sister and his cousin's jackets and coats and he gave them to me and Laura. So we wore them. So these are clothes that are, here's another picture of us. This is uh, in a cave on Mount Etna. I don't own these clothes. Laura doesn't own these clothes. We have cute little sundresses that I would have looked super cute in for Mr. Fabrizio, but this is what we had to wear and we still froze our asses up. All right, so you see what it's like on the outside. You go up and up and up and it's, there's no one there. I mean, you saw on the, on the shot I showed you at the top, right? Here we are, this is, you, then you see it starts to go from green to gray and black and look very volcanic. And you're starting to think this is Mars, right? Like, uh, what did I get into? Um, but you're going up and up, up. It's a really long ride. You're jumping around. You're kind of nauseous. You're smelling the cigarette smoke. You're <laughs> whatever. And then you, um, you get to the top and this is what it looks like. You're in the clouds. Now all the green is gone. All the vegetation is gone. There was a little, uh, like a ski thing. No one was skiing. I mean, that's a dumb thing to say. You know, like a, a little restaurant where uh, Fabrizio brought, bought us a chocolate because of course we're idiots and had no money. So he had to give us clothes and money like I'm 12. And, um, but it, I gotta tell you, it was the best hot chocolate I ever had in my life. Maybe because of the company. And at, well, Laura too, but in any event, we were hanging with Fabrizio pretending that he was our new boyfriend. Well, I was, she's married. 
So here's the top and it looks like this. It's crazy and black and you think you're on Mars and you wish you hadn't come except for the fact this guy's hot. Now, this is what it looks like. It's so barren, it's so cold. Now, I'm showing you this picture. This isn't the one because I actually have a picture of Laura. You can see Laura in the distance. Damn, where's my Laura picture? Oh, I think I threw it. Well, damn. Hold on. No, this isn't the Laura picture. I can't find it. Laura is way, way up. You can't even see her. Where is that picture? Well, in any event, this is what it looks like. I have a picture of her way in the distance. It's almost like a joke to show it to you because all you see is a little speck of someone going. And I was like, Laura, get down off the volcano. Like, don't do it. No book is worth it. But she's so adventurous and cool. When her family goes on vacations, they ski and they went to Iceland. They climb things. They're running on things. They do a million things. Me, I'm looking for the bar. But here it is. It's really incredible. And she's you're in all these caters, craters. It is no joke. Oh, this is this is it. Here, look. Not her. Not this guy. This is Laura. Can you see this little speck of a person on this barren lunar landscape? That is Laura, my bestie, on the edge of a crater, having the time of her life. I didn't move from the spot near the inn. I was hoping for another hot chocolate, but they came in tiny little cups that weren't enough. But why this matters in the book, believe it or not, is I thought this is so interesting because I'm learning about this terrain. I'm also meeting, look, I'm joking around about Fer Fabrizio, but there is a literary intent because you did have a little bit of a spirit. You got a little spirit of an independent kind of person. You know, I sort of had a sense that their West is a little like our West used to be. The idea it's wide open. Fabrizio is his own man. He has his own little company. He takes middle-aged women up the mountain. He buys them a hot chocolate and they, they have a fantasy for the rest of their life or at least two years until they forget it. So it's a whole, they, he had a real joie de vivre that I think Italians really have, brio, the masculine, but also sweet and warm. And and just completely charming. And it helped me because I was like, that's my boy. That's Franco, like charming the pants off yet, lending his coat. You know, it's just the coolest thing ever. So I have got that personality from him a little bit. And also I loved the terrain. And I thought, you know, I really want to do something in a cave. And he said, well, there's all caves, caves along here. I can take you around. In fact, he even built the steps to get into one cave. Cause of course he did. Cause he's so friggin' manly. In any event, here's the cave. We went in the cave and, and it is no joke, non-tourist related. Um, this is like Fabrizio's cave. And you go in, you can't even, you can barely see the entrance and you go in and it gets really, really pitch black. And what he does, and here's Laura and me in the cave. That he took the picture. He gave us these helmets, so we feel a little kind of official and also like cool. And little, I don't know what the, oh, this is a little flashlight. So, like, you know, when you go out at night, you walk the dogs, you wear one of those. And here we are in the dark, and you have to be really careful where you step. And you also have to be careful not to cause like a cave slide or rocks to come around. And it's really, really cool. And what I found in 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 the cave was, and see if you can see this, I'll point it out little tiny family of mice on the ledge and he talked about the things that live in the cage including the little tiny family of mice let me get it really close you know i like mice outside when i see like a field mouse i think that's so cute then when it's in the house i freak out so you can't really it's not fair to mice really but anyway this is cool because i i got an idea of what the cave was like all the little things when i'm writing it i always run through my senses so when i'm doing research it's like I go, what does it smell like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? All of those things, and I write them down in on pad. And so when I go home in in, lo in loyalty, there is a character, Alfredo, who lives in a cave. And he hides in a cave. And I uh, I got the cave from this because I went in a cave. And I know it is a legit cave because I was there. And that's what's so cool about doing research for a novel, that you get to do that stuff. You get to travel to this faraway place. It's your job to make it real. And I went for it. So that's really the, why Mount Etna matters, that it was interesting and cool. It gave me a vibe to characterize these people. And I also got to go in a cave and see super, super cute mice that I hope I never see in my kitchen. That is the background to our story.
Now, let me read my wonderful quote, which makes me so happy, from Debbie Allen of Barnes & Noble in Exxon. Can I just say I love Barnes & Noble? You know we like to highlight all kinds of bookstores. Independent bookstores are so important. So are it's Barnes & Noble. What I really think matters is that there is a bookstore that you can go to and that you go there and you buy books there so they stay open and they're in our communities. So not only there are, do you have that wonderful feeling that you can go in a bookstore and browse around. I always thought bookstores are like hardware stores for girls, but I thought that's a little sexist, but I can spend hours in a bookstore. I look at everything. I buy too much, but I love books. I love living with books and I love reading books. And of course I buy more than I can hold. But Barnes and Noble has been there for my career from the very, very beginning. My first signing was at a Barnes and Noble in Bryn Mawr that sadly doesn't exist anymore, Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. And I'll never forget because they, they were just starting to have signings there. They agreed to have me because I was local and because they're so open to supporting local authors. And they had me in the children's section. Well, the name of the book was Everywhere That Mary Went. So a lot of people came up there thinking that it was a children's book. I said, no, it's actually a lawyer book and there's a stalker and then there's a chase scene. I'm hoping this is the beginning of a beautiful career, which it actually turned out to be. But a lot of people got the book that night and it's all thanks to Barnes and Noble. They have been enormously supportive of my career. I love their stores. I love all the stuff they sell in the stores. Mostly I love the books, but also they have a great drink in there that is my, um, well, I don't need to get into that, but that matcha drink is amazing. Anyway, why I bring this up is to tell you that I was very, very happy to send an advanced copy of Loyalty to Barnes and Noble and Debbie Allen at Exton, Pennsylvania, who is one of the most wonderful, warmest, loveliest people you ever want to meet and who reads everything and always has. I mean, she is so well read and she knows everything about books, um, was kind enough to read Loyalty and really liked it and said, Loyalty is engaging from the first page and I had a hard time putting it down. That makes me so happy. Thank you so, so much, Debbie. I'm so indebted to you and I'm so indebted to Barnes and Noble for their support. I really, really appreciate it. Now, oh, I do have a big announcement. Let me tell my big announcement before we give something away. Cause something really good happened today. No, I did not get a date, even better. Do you remember this book, What Happened to the Bennetts? It came out last year. Today, this book and me, I was nominated for a prize. I was nominated for the Hammett Prize, which is given by the International Crime Writers of North America. It's open to um, the United States and Canada, and I was shortlisted for it, which is the first time that's ever happened to me. And it's really, I'm like super excited. It's such an honor. So thank you, International Crime Writers. Thank you for that. I'm very proud of this book. Honestly, I'm proud of every book I write, but I got to tell you why this is so sweet today. This is so sweet today because if you saw the Academy Awards and you saw those wonderful prizes and at the end, the woman who won for best actress, who's so terrific said, ladies, don't let anyone ever tell you you're past your prime. And I thought, damn right, because here I am in my, in my dotage getting this wonderful nomination for what happened to the Bennetts. I'm so excited and so honored. So that was very big news in the Scottolini household of one person and three dogs and two cats. But I'm really, really gay for you. I feel so excited coming into this pub day, more than I think I ever have, just because I haven't been out yet in two years. Can you imagine? And I miss you guys. Like, I love you. I'm sad. I see the, you know, your names and I know some of you from previous um, signings, but to finally get out, the tour schedule is out. I am going, I'm going where I can drive because we're still a little nervous about flying, but I'm going to hither and yon. I'm going to Rhode Island. I'm going up north. I'm going down south. I'll be in Delaware. So take a look and see if you can make any of those tour stops. I would really, really love it. Do think about recommending the book for your book club. You will love it. It is a perfect book club read. There will be book club questions on the website. We've written them and they're great. Book clubs love my books. And as I said earlier, if you're not in a book club, you are now, baby. We leave no reader behind. I just don't want to. Anyway, I like the idea. Reading is inclusive. It's about opening up and opening your heart and your arms and taking up people's lives in. So of course you're included. There will be virtual events for really terrific bookstores that aren't close, like Book Passage in San Francisco. You can join any one of those. You can ask questions at them. 
and now I'll be able in then I'll be able to say more about the book because maybe you'll have read it. We don't want to give any spoilers away right now, especially pre-pub. So this is my way of saying thank you. Please be a part of it going forward. We are going into the home stretch. And I cannot wait for March 28th. I'm very, very excited. I'll be out and about. And I'm so proud of this book. I really, really am. I think it's terrific. I think it's entertaining. And I appreciate, you know, the chance, I think, talking to you so intimately about it and showing you these videos and you put it with my silly jokes and seeing your comments, which are so nice, um, make me more excited about this book than I think I ever have been. So this is just really great. And that's a gift you've given me. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you so much. I love you and I'm grateful for you. And I'll see you next Monday night. We're counting them down, baby, to loyalty. Thank you very, very much. And you stay well till next Monday night, 7.30. Bye-bye.